George, you can sit down. Good evening. Good evening. Can you guys hear me back there? All the Paul? Good? Okay. Thank you. Good. Assuming somebody has hearing aids. That may be a big assumption. I thought that was only for the invocation, the music. Uh, George, maybe you could ever turn down the music? I guess not. Well, we'll live with it for a bit. Thank you, Andy. Good evening and welcome to the Xavier High School class of 1966 50th reunion. George is still struggling yeah. down here. It's okay, George. Bad seating. First of all, uh, we would like to thank everybody for coming not only last evening, but this evening. Uh, believe it or not, we've had a 75% attendance of those who could come, so it's absolutely outstanding. So thank you very much. As one of you so articulately said as we went back and forth to the question of where were you in 62, wow, we made it to the fabulous 50th. And it's truly awesome to have everybody here tonight as well as last night. Tonight, as we did last night, we will renew friendships and also remember those who can't be with us this evening. Thank you very much for rekindling the Xavier spirit. And now let's move on with the program. The Jesuit education, the Xavier experience, is part of the foundation of who we, who we are today and who we have been over the past 50 years. We all received an excellent and outstanding education. But I would also suggest that we were taught a set of values that have been and will continue to be a very important part of our life's journey. Our guest speaker this evening truly lived the values that he imparted to us at Xavier. After being laicized in 1976, Charlie spent 28 years in the Chicago area working in the world of civil rights, public service, and elected politics. That must have been very interesting, elected politics for Charlie. <laughs> Throughout the years, Charlie worked at all levels of educational in institutions, from elementary schools, secondary schools, through national and regional colleges and universities. He tirelessly worked to improve the lives of others. <coughs> in reading the bios, as many of you people out there did and are continuing to do as well. For his service and contributions, Charlie received a national award from the Department of Education. To those who've known him, he has been a shining example of a life well lived and a role model for countless youth. As some of you may remember, Charlie was one of the three amigos. I remember, how many remember that term? Now look at that. He, along with Jack London and who? Murphy. John Murphy. Remained intimate friends throughout their life's journey. Unfortunately, Jack and John passed away in 2011. They, along with many others, will be truly missed tonight. Charlie describes them, and I, uh, describes them as two of the great ones, and there were many, involved in the early years of Xavier. He further states, I know not better quality men, unquote, both were for others. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce our amigo, Charlie Haggerty. to use this because those people way back there need to hear you. If Paul Holland can't hear me, I better take the mic. Let me, you want it, want it on or off? That's on. Yeah. It's a very, very humbling, sincere tribute to be asked to be the guest speaker. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize some people in the audience. 
one of the most dynamic influences in the school history, Father J.C. O'Brien. J.C., I owed you that. J.C. discovered me in 1960, 19, 60, 40, 40, 40. 40. I'll, I'll pull it up. Not 19, 1960. And I was discovered as a brilliant second tenor. <laughs> J.C. was the choir master at Western, and he was an incredible talent hunter. He sought me out and allowed me to sing for six years, three in philosophy, three in theology. And many a Christmas Eve was spent with J.C. singing, only to be capsulized in the middle of being a scholastic, and he was a priest at Xavier, and the English, head of the English department. Hats off to you, J.C. I also want to recognize one of the other faculty members whom I, whose great laughter I miss. I haven't heard in 50 years. And <laughs> <laughs> when he laughed, you knew it. Jim Audio is a German teacher, speech teacher, and he gave tremendous abilities to our students and an extraordinarily dedicated teacher. After Xavier closed, he moved on to BC High and had an illustrious career. Jim, we welcome you here tonight. There is no umlaut in James's name. <laughs> Today I had the splendid experience of doing some shopping in a local Donlin's market. <laughs> you paid too much. <laughs> and it was an absolutely wonderful experience. And when I finished it, I had asked the, uh, a woman in the vegetable counter where so-and-so was, and she said, it's right this way, and let me go and I'll show you. And then I went somewhere else and I asked a guy, I said, I'm looking to get some flowers, and where do I get any flowers? Oh, you come here, this is where it is. So when I was cashing out, the cashier was a tremendously of service, and I said to her, I said, this is phenomenal. I, the service has been wonderful. And she said, the cashier said, we have a policy in this store, all of us, that we were a team and we work as a team. So Jack Donlan, you have certainly changed. Because, as I recall, team wasn't in your vocabulary. Shoot! 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 Now, before I begin my very formal, very profound address, I'd like to answer two charges that have been made against me. One charge, I am going to plead totally guilty. The other charge, I'm going to plead totally innocent. Some of you may find this hard to believe, but I was formally charged with forcing Matt McGuire to sit on a tack <laughs> in 
one of my English classes. I totally deny it. <laughs> the accusee claims there's evidence, however, I deny it. The second charge, I plead total and absolute guilt. And I, if I could get on my knees, I would, and I beg, I did it out there by the monument, I beg total forgiveness for putting the nickname of Fatty on John <laughs> In this age of bulliness and getting rid of bullying, I realized my sin. I realized my guilt. I'm having dinner with John and John, John and his charming wife and feeling very much at home. So for all the harm, which is brought to my attention by none other than George Logan saying I should apologize, I humbly do. So John Cohen, God bless. <laughs> With regard to the booklets that were distributed, there are no pictures, as you know, and it's simply text. The text was controlled by a very, very uh, celebrated editor. <laughs> and he, that editor had two levels of intolerance. One level of intolerance was he just did not want to, did not tolerate narcissism and hence limited narratives to a page long. And secondly, one of the other things that this sterling editor had no tolerance for was what he calls logorrhea. <laughs> and logorrhea is excessive wordiness. <laughs> That being said, any of you that see your sparkling bios wrenched from their beautiful poetry, <laughs> from their lyric, whatever, and simply erased down to common sense communication, <laughs> I have no sympathy. <laughs> but the fact that the booklet has no pictures reminds me of some wonderful stories of Xavier and my time. And the no picture, when I was writing it, I thought immediately of a wonderful classmate, Mark McKenna. And in his second year of my class, we're drudging through reading Silas Marner. Oh. <laughs> now I remember, I remember Mark McKenna vividly because I was in the cafeteria <laughs> and actually heard him. Someone said, what are you reading? He said, Silas Manoa. <laughs> <laughs> so he had no time for it. But anyway, I was in class and drudging through this wretched novel, but it was part of the curriculum. And Mark raised his hand and he said, Mr. Hagerty, I really like this book. Now this is after I heard him call it Silas Manoa. <laughs> He said, I really like this book, but honest to God, do you think you could have had some pictures in it? <laughs> <laughs> Another incident of wit was an instance of I was delivering myself of a very profound lecture to these sophomore imaginations and minds, and up in the back of the room went a hand and it was Jed Healy. Oh. And as you know, Jed was a big, big guy. And he was very sincere. And he raised his hand and I said, I think I'm getting to him. He's gonna ask a question that's gonna knock it out of the park. <laughs> and I was waiting for this profound question about whatever brilliant thing I was sharing. <laughs> and Jed said, Mr. Hegarty, do we have lunch at the same time today as we had it yesterday? <laughs> Now, if there, 
if you were inspiring. <laughs> if, if there's one way to crush the ego of a teacher, it's that. <laughs> and the other story that rings in my mind, it's a bit uh, edgy language, but we'll all offer it up. <laughs> His or, origin is uh, Anthony Martinetti. Ah. Now, none of you perhaps realize that Anthony was uh, well versed in Anglo Saxon <laughs> language <laughs> uh, and had a great love and used it frequently. <laughs> and there was a scene with Long John Murphy. We're getting close to Parents' Night. And Long John was trying to get into Anthony's mind to teach him the beauty and harmony of mathematics. <laughs> and Tony just would have no time for it. And he was cutting up with whatever he was doing. As you know, Tony, he, would, Tony, he was just uh, infinite motion. <laughs> and so Murph called him up to the desk and he said, Tony, look, at, you've got to get, you've got to bear down. You've got to do, you can just see Murph talking. And Tony's looking at him. <laughs> and so Murph opens up his mock book and he points down. He said, take a look at that now. We get Parents Night coming up here and look at that. What am I supposed to say to you? What do you, th what do you see when you see that? And Anthony looks down at the John Murphy's mock book and he goes, look at all those fucking zeros. <laughs> God bless Tony. God bless. Now, you well know Murph was just totally speechless, which was unusual, and he just lost it. He just gave up. And it, it uh, was wonderful. Tonight, I'd like to talk about the reunion and what the reunion is. In the uh, booklet we put together, and all of us put together, and uh, 